This is a short clip to demonstrate how to use Piazza. Uh, Piazza is in a way a discussion board in first instance, but it also replaces most of email communication and it will allow you to administer online clips. So go to sign up if it's your first time or log in if you are already logged in. You get to your discussion board. If you click up here, you see the ones you have already enrolled in, but you can also go to create a new class. So if you go to create a new class, um, in the setup, it will ask you which university you're associated with. Um, well, just create a new class. So let me just uh, it, pretend there's a class econ xxxx. It's a test unit and I create this new class. You have to say when it is. It uses American timings, but it's not crucial. Um, so there's just a little bit of information. You have to provide a, a class name or class number for Manchester, that would be econ and then a number, uh, give an estimated number of enrollments, not so crucial, and uh, sign your life away. And here's your new class, and you can say that you join as a professor and then merely enroll into that class, and off you are. Once you have set up your class, there are a few um, standard posts in here. Um, and uh, the most important thing is how do you get your students to enroll? So to immediately show with this enroll your students box and you can copy and paste email address in here. But you can also go to manage class and there's a sign up link and you can use that sign up link. So I'll show you how I use that in Blackboard. So here is my Blackboard site. So here's my Blackboard site. You can see here's a discussion board, the Piazza is linked in here. If you want to link it here, you go to this plus item and go to web link. And here you just enter a name and the URL and submit. I will now cancel uh, because I've done that already for my unit. Once you click on this discussion board, then uh, Blackboard opens its discussion board. Now there are different items here, manage class and for uh, and Q&A for instance, that's where all the posts will be. But initially you want to manage the class and you want to set up your class. So manage enrollment, here is where you can enroll TAs or other lecturers just again by email address, they will then get an email. Here's again a box where you can copy and paste student email addresses or you can upload a file. Um, but if students follow the sign up link, they will get to sign up. Now there's also settings for, the, for your basically discussion board. You can uh, enable or disable private posts, anonymous posts, most students will possibly use that and want to use that. Um, other things I'm not gonna I'm not gonna discuss here in detail and you will have to figure them out yourself if you want to use them. You can uh, enable groups if that is relevant for your course. So something I find uh, very uh, useful to to use is what are called folders here or those who use Google Mails would possibly call them labels. You can configure class folders. So I edited the default folders and uh, you can either choose standard ones or you can create your own. So what I did is I created basically uh, folders or labels for each of my topics. So here mock exams and here you can add additional folders. And later every post, and I'll show you posts soon, will then need to be associated with at least one of these labels, but potentially more. So it's possibly good to think about these at the beginning of the term, how and make sure you set them up. So then if you go to Q&A, that's where most of the action happens. So this is an active course. If you want to create a new post, you will basically get three possibilities. And let me discuss these. So you can either post a question, a note or a poll or 
So if you go to question, basically you or students can set uh, can post these. So there's a question. So you can see students will often upload uh, images of your ha of the handwritten workings, especially if it involves maths. There's a label or folder associated to this. And then there are two standard elements here to a question, the student answer and the instructor's answer. The idea behind the student answer is that all students can edit and improve this. The instructor's answer, all instructors can edit this. And then underneath is the follow-up discussion. This acts more or less like a traditional discussion board where stu students can say something and others can respond. So let's go and create a new question in my, this is my existing course. Um, I always post to the entire class. You choose a label uh, to this and um, then you can type in here. So let me choose a label here, organization say, and I'll give it a test course. And now really the piece de resistance of Piazza is that you can use LaTeX. Certainly for people like me who teach uh, statistics and maths, and uh, that is very, very convenient. So if you want to use LaTeX, if you want to write a formula, the only difference is that instead of $1, you say $2. You write $2 to begin an equation. And then you just write whatever LaTeX code you would have written otherwise. So let me write some uh, uh, the formula for the OLS estimator here. So let me jump ahead to the uh, basically completed formula. So those of you who know LaTeX, this will look familiar. Of course, you can insert images or hyperlinks. Uh, you can uh, include tables if you want to uh, different formats, although no colorful text, unfortunately. So formula editor, and then you can preview, and that looked like a pretty good formula. And then you just post uh, your question and here it is. And then it will, if you click on organization, that was the label we gave. Uh, we gave this, students can see all the posts that are there with respect to organization. You can label something as a good question. Of course, it's my own question would be a good question. Uh, and there's the instructor an answer and the follow up discussion. The student's answer will only appear as soon as the student has said something. So the second type of post you can make is a note. A note basically doesn't require an answer. So it just has an initial note and then a follow-up discussion. So here, for instance, we have uh, a call for what students wanted to do in the last tutorial and then students can uh, make requests and me or uh, the TA uh, responded to this. Finally, Finally, you can create polls or in-class polls. So it's like typical clicker type questions. There are multiple choice or multiple answer type uh, questions. And uh, so if you create these, you go to new post, choose the poll in-class response. Again, you want a label to this and you write the poll. Here is where your answer choices are added and there are several settings, how many correct answers, uh, what you want when you want to show the results to students and so forth. Quite typical for these type of clicker questions and then you post. Let me go to an existing poll. So here, for instance, is a question I asked in the first lecture and then students can see the answers afterwards and what is very nice is this question survives in the discussion board and students can, if they so require, continue discussion on that question here on the discussion board. In class, students would answer these questions on their uh, mobile phone or computer or iPad app, uh, which they will use to access Piazza. So now if you just tips in terms of how to use this. Of course, firstly, I would uh, encourage any TAs on the course to also, uh, as you've seen previously, actively participate in the, uh, in the uh, discussion board and answer questions. You can actually highlight answers as endorsed answers. So if student answers, you perhaps don't even have to answer, you just say, I endorse this answer and that's good, but you could follow up with other questions. Now, what 
I did and my TA was very good at is to not actually answer questions outright but ask students to provide workings so that we could you know then endorse their workings as correct answers or where they made mistakes point them specifically out to the benefit of themselves and uh, of course other students now something that is uh, very nice is that you can also link posts with each other let me go to some posts i uploaded some exam information and in here for instance i uh, linked another post you can see here at 58 that links to another post and every post so let's go to this every post so let me go to some organization here on the left hand side you can see every post has a unique identifier this one for instance at 22 this one at 43 so if i just in another post include at 43 it will automatically create a link uh, to this post so it's really really nice uh, to work like this of course to make a discussion board work you really have to see the discussion board as a lecturer so when you get interesting emails copy and paste the email on the discussion board and answer the email on the discussion board not on the email if you have students in office hours with interesting questions put these questions onto the discussion board and put an answer in there as well or ask your student in the discussion board to replicate their question your answer on the discussion board if they're interesting questions in the lecture uh, you think may be worthwhile having for eternity just put them onto the discussion board you'll need to put initially some work into a discussion board for it to work enjoy <laughs>